Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, many of our subscribers and loyal followers are patients who have heart conditions, and many may have had a procedure called a coronary angiogram. We've had a video on what an angiogram is, but I wanted to focus on a bit about the recovery after an angiogram and what are some of the do's and don'ts. Now, to summarize, the coronary angiogram is a procedure whereby we use catheters placed directly into the arteries of the heart and injecting dye to look for any particular blockages. It's a procedure that is done if you have symptoms that might be suggestive of a condition called angina, whereby you have tightness in the chest or you become short of breath when you're walking up a hill, or if you've come into hospital with chest pain and you've been told that you have a heart attack. Well, an angiogram is an important test to allow us to assess what is going on with the arteries around your heart and what is the best way to treat them. The majority of angiograms nowadays are being performed by placing a catheter or a tube called a sheath into the radial artery and that is the, or the artery that's in the wrist. The majority of these procedures are done via the right hand. Now I want to show you a little bit about anatomy and what is actually going on with the radial artery and you'll get a better understanding of why we place this little device at the end of your procedure to get control of any possible bleeding. So I'll use my hand as an example. Here is my thumb and we can see here quite clearly we have the radial artery on this side and we have another artery on this side called the ulnar artery. So if I draw that out for you so you know exactly what we're actually doing. The radial artery comes up about here and this is a washable marker so don't worry. And then on this side we've got the ulnar artery. So these are sort of two arteries that go all the way up to the hand, forearm, and supply blood from our heart all the way down to our fingers. Well, this artery here is where we actually place the tube. Now, people often get confused about the tube that we place, and people may equate to having a little catheter or a cannula into one of the veins. Well, we're not actually going into a vein when we do an angiogram, we're actually going into the artery. And that is the artery that you feel when you actually palpate your pulse. So that's where we place our tube and we give you a little bit of anesthetic here and then through a small little needle and a wire we're able to then successfully advance a tube called a sheath. And this is a sheath here and that sheath comes through and sits around here this little sheath and you see there's a little hole in the tip here whereby we place our catheters through there and these catheters are very vary in size and shape but through those catheters we're able to place our equipment to then get us into the arteries around your heart now when we've completed the angiogram and if you've just had an angiogram or you've had a stent well it's important obviously that this tube comes out now given that we've gone into your artery if we just took it out and left it out without putting some pressure, you would be bleeding because the pressure in the artery is quite high. So what we do to achieve hemostasis or to actually stop any possible bleeding from the angiogram, we use a contraption called a TR band. And this is what it is. And many of you would have seen this little TR band. And what is it? Well, it's got some Velcro that secures on the side of your of your hand and it's got a little device here that we inflate and inside this particular bit of plastic is a little inflatable balloon that actually applies pressure as we take the tube out and I'll show you a bit of a demonstration so so what we do we place this around here with a little green marker on top of where we've taken the tube out now this has been done by one hand, so it's obviously a bit tricky, but it's placed like that. And then through here, we're able to successfully inflate by using a syringe. And we put some air, and that uh, gets inflated. And there's a little balloon right on top of where the tube has come out. Once we put the pressure in, 
18 flats. And that then keeps quite firm pressure over the radial artery puncture to stop any possible bleeding. So here is the TR band. And it's got a little inflatable balloon here that is inflated and it puts pressure on the radial artery to stop that from bleeding. And that normally stays there for several hours, you know, three, four hours, and the staff in the recovery will be taking a little bit of air out each half hour to slowly keep an eye on whether you're oozing or whether there's any bleeding from that spot. Now, because that pressure, as I said, is high, there's often a risk of bruising or bleeding and that's the important part of what this band does over the next few hours after you've had the procedure in recovery. Normally after three or so hours you'll have this device taken off and the staff will observe your hand, have a feel of the pulse, ensure there's no ooze, there's no bleeding and then it's safe often for you to go home on the same day. So because we've gone into the artery and as I said, the artery is a high pressure part of the body versus one of the veins. So you might sort of see some of my veins here. These are low pressure. So you're less likely to have a lot of bruising or bleeding if you put a little cannula in the vein versus if we go into your artery. And through the artery, we need to be cautious about a few particular factors. To prevent you from bruising or bleeding, we don't want you to be doing much in terms of lifting or moving that hand for a couple of days. So we will say to you, don't sort of leave any, lift any shopping bags or any other bags, handbags on that side. We also have a usual bit of general advice to say no driving for normally a couple of days, for two days or so. And that stems from the fact that we've gone into the artery. So with a lot of driving, obviously using the, the steering wheel, and um, that does put a little bit of pressure in the hand, so we encourage you not to have not not to drive, and you'll be given some specific instructions from your doctor and your team post uh, discharge. But we normally say no driving for a couple of days to allow the artery puncture to heal and to stop any bruising developing. Always keep an eye on the site, making sure there's no particular redness, there's no infection that might be become painful, might become red around the puncture site. Keeping an eye on any bruising around the area that may develop. Sometimes the bruising may, in fact, track upwards in the forearm and you might get a bit of uh, discoloration, a bit of bruising. So just keep an eye on it. If it becomes painful at any stage, very important you consult your doctor and uh, have a follow-up assessment ASAP because the key here is that if there has been any particular bruising well it's important to identify it and we can often do a you know a simple ultrasound just to make sure there's no impact on the blood flow that is getting down to our hand and our fingers so keeping an eye for any infection keeping an eye for any bruising any pain that might develop it's not uncommon that you might have a little bit of numbness around the area, often for a few hours after the anaesthetic is wearing off. And sometimes, because there are so many nerves around that area as well, you may have a little bit of numbness. Not uncommon, but if it's persisting or if it develops after you've gone home, then please let your treating doctors know or your cath lab nurse as to what is going on. So during the procedure that we place this catheter, we give you blood thinning medicines and you know we, we say so we give you some blood thinning medication and that is a medicine called heparin during the procedure. And the reason why we do that is because after an angiogram has been performed via the artery in the wrist, because it is a relatively small artery, there is sometimes a risk of developing some clot in that artery and that then can impact the flow into that artery. So the heparin that we give you during the procedure helps reduce that risk. It still is a small risk that there might be some clot building up in that artery. So of course if you feel pain in the in the in the forearm, pain in the fingers, in the hand, over the puncture site, then you please seek attention from your doctor, from your cardiologist, whoever did your procedure. So there are a couple of simple tips. Hopefully you've been able to understand 
what we do following the angiogram. We expect you to keep obviously hydrated, making sure that you're not doing too much activity as we talked about. And the recovery, as I said, a couple of days after, you're able to do your normal things actively without any concern. Now, in some situations where you've had a tube or a sheath placed into the artery in the groin, well then sometimes we say that no driving for a period of about three days or so because you're pressing the uh, the accelerator, the brake, and we don't want any particular bleeding or bruising to take off from that artery in the femoral. But again, similar information, no driving for a few days, not doing any ma major lifting, and that's just to minimize the risk of a little bit of uh, bleeding happening. And hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Until the next one, bye for now.